Good morning, good morning, good morning as you guys are coming in. I just want to speak that over you this morning. Good morning to all of you. It is a great day, a great day. We're so excited to be with you. I know some of you are coming in. We're going to give you that opportunity. But as you come in, you know it is our custom, it is our culture, and it is our creed that we say something nice. So even as you come in, I want you to just put out there, good morning, hashtag good morning, hashtag what are you looking for? What are you expecting today? If you see someone come on that you know, speak to them. I know we're operating under this order of social distancing, but let me tell you something. We cannot uh, disconnect our love and our compassion and our heart for our fellow man. So please tell them something. Something good. Tell them it's good to see you. It's good to know that you're still in the land of the living. You're still hopeful. You're still helpful. And we're just grateful for you. Also, I want to um, extend that offer for you to let me know where it is you are viewing us from. Um, it's so good to have everybody in that's joining us now and I'm so grateful I'm so appreciative I'm so thankful and I just honor the Lord this morning for all of you and so thankful for all of you that you are able to be with us this morning I just bring you greetings it's your friend it's your man Pastor VJ and we just wanted to extend our love and heartfelt God bless you to all of you, uh, everybody that's chiming in this morning was getting so many um, requests and, 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 and shouts out this morning. I just want to say thank you right back. I'm so grateful uh, just to invade your space um, this morning that I, I thank God that nothing changes. You know, he still remains the same. And we are grateful for that, that um, there's an old song that is that is written that says times are filled with swift transitions. Uh, none on earth unmoved can stand. We are to build our hopes on things that are eternal. And it leaves us by saying we can hold on to God's unchanging hands. I'm grateful for it this morning. And I hope that you are as well. I hope that you are in a place uh, where you've gathered the family around, gather the family yes, around, man. You're, yeah. you're around in the, in the uh, around your iPads, around your iPhones. I'm grateful for it. Listen, I'm thankful for it. We are getting ready uh, to partake of this word today. I'm just excited, man. I am so amped up because regardless of what's happening around us that's ever changing, the Bible says, and I'm so happy to state this, that our God is never changing. He remains the same. And that's what we can take um, confidence in. That's where we can stand in. So I want you to take this time also to invite your friends, invite your family, let them know that we are on this morning, that we are in the building. And we have a word this morning that's going to be encouraging, that's going to be uplifting, uh, that's going to be enlightened. I want you to know that God uh, is concerned uh, about your heart and where you are and, and your faith and how you're standing um, in this moment. That this, this, this that we are in, I'm telling you, it's really a testament of who we are, of what we believe. And, and where we're going. And I just really want to speak to that this morning. I'm just, man, I'm telling you, I'm so excited this morning. Um, and I pray that wherever you are, whether you is, whether you suited and booted or in your PJs, I want to let you know that our God is ever present, that he is mighty, he is moving, and he is great. I see all of you are coming in this morning. I just want to shout some of you out this morning. My mother is in the building. Mama, I salute you. I thank you. Destiny is in the building. Look at them coming in. I see you. Uh, uh, Elder uh, Ellsworth. Fair. I see you. Look at Nick. Nick, I see you. Y'all are coming in this morning. Do me a favor and just shout me out where it is you are viewing from. And then I want you, again, I want you to hashtag. Listen, the Bible says in the book of Revelations that we overcome not only we're, we're, it's essential that the blood of the lamb has caused us to overcome. But here is our responsibility. There's always a, a, that door swing two ways. God's going to do his part and we have ours. Revelation says, and how they overcame was by the blood of the lamb and also by the words of our testimony. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to hashtag a good word to somebody today. I need you to hashtag what it is you are believing God for, what it is you're standing uh, in faith for. If it's somebody on here that's that's that you want to pray for, uh, I, I want you to be hashtagging this morning what we are standing in prayer for. What What is the need that you want us to go to God for? Uh, as I shared with you that we are, as a church, we are in 
corporate prayer. And I'm challenging all the people that we've been called to serve, called to serve. And I want to shout out our family at Revival Center, Virginia Beach, all the saints, family and friends who are on. Listen, guys, it will not be long before we are together again. I'm strategizing something right now, something very soon that we'll be able to take a part of right here, even in the midst of this Corona social distancing. So you guys stay tuned. We're going to be talking and it won't be long before we are back together. So I'm grateful for you this morning. Thankful for you this morning that you are still joining in. I see you, Illinois. You're joining in this morning. You guys continue uh, to come in. Don't worry about uh, what's happening. We're still, listen, we are still at it. God is still on the throne. Nothing has changed. Listen to me. His plan, listen, you know what he told me? Uh, and, and I'm going to him saying, Lord, what, what are we going to do? What, what, what are we doing? You know what he told me? Stick to the plan. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to stick to the plan. However it flows, however it moves, listen, we're going to stick to the plan. God doesn't change. So guess what? That means we're not going to change. We're going to stay consistent because he's consistent. So I want to love on you this morning. I want to shout out um, all of our churches this morning, all of our pastors this morning that, that are standing in the stand. Let me tell you something. I want to encourage every pastor this morning. Listen, this is not, this is nothing new that, that challenged God. Listen, this is the first time that, that, a, <laughs> that a virus of this magnitude has hit the earth, that, that leaders haven't been cha challenged, that, that the body of Christ hasn't been challenged. Listen, it may be a first for us. But listen, this, this is not a first for God. And so I want to continue to encourage you to continue to stand strong, to continue to trust in God, to continue to believe in what he told you to do and what he told you uh, uh, to accomplish. And know this, that, that, that the scripture says, if God be for you. Now that if is not contingent upon can God. That if is not contingent upon will God. That, that, that contingency is not, that if is not, uh, 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 does he have the ability to. No, that if is for certain of when God, listen, when God is for you, I want you to know that nothing can stop you. And I want you to know this morning, nothing is going to stop the plan of God in your life, in my life, even in the plan that he has for this planet. So I want you to know that. I want you to re be reminded of that. Those of you who are coming in, I want to, um, before I share this word with you, I want you to know that you can go and email us at revivalcenterva at gmail.com. If it is you want us to stand with you in prayer, if it is that you want us to believe God with you and for you, I want you to send us your prayer requests. And, and if when God is answering those prayers, I want you to send us the praise report that, 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 that God is honoring what you're saying. We want to hear those praise reports. I've been getting them in about God. His healing power is still flowing. His, he's still opening doors, man. He's still doing what he does. Us. That's that's be God. And so I want you to send us those uh, prayer requests. I want you to send us those praise reports. Uh, so many of you have been uh, reaching out to me and, and reaching out to us saying, well, listen, we can't be with you in present, but we want to be with you. We want to sow into what you're doing. So here's what I want to extend to you today. Uh, you can go to our cash app. Um, our cash app uh, is dollar sign revival center VA. It is dollar sign revival center VA. And you can send that seed, a uh, one time seed, a weekly seed, a yearly seed, a monthly seed, whatever God lays upon your heart. And I'm telling you, we are taking what God has blessed us with through your hands. And we are taking care of our community. We are taking care of those who are in need, those who are who are are, are are short in terms of fund. They're in a transition with their finances, but God has given us an opportunity. He says that I will make you the lender and not the borrower. So therefore, I want you to know that we're taking those funds and we're not living la vida loca, sit up here chilling. No, no, we are doing what the kingdom has challenged us to do. And that is go ye therefore, take care of them, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Feed the sick, heal the leper. That's our command. That's we are sticking to the plan. So I want to take this time also to celebrate and thank you for those of you who have been seating. You've been faithful. You've been so committed and we are thankful for you. And those of you that want to get in on it, let me tell you something. Get in on it because God is definitely doing what he does and increasing in a time of decline. 
God is increasing us, man. We, we're not moved about what happens in the world. The Bible gives us so much confidence in Romans 12 and 2. He says, and I beseech thee, I beg you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you not only show yourself to be a light, present your body as a living sacrifice. Show the people in the world that what you have is concrete, that what you have is not predicated upon how 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 good your budget is or how, how much hours you're able to work. No, 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 no. It says we're not conformed to the systems of this world, but we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we're not, we're not so inclined. We are aware of the reality of where we are, but we're so real and we're so aware of the reality of Christ. So I want you to be encouraged to know that what God's spoken to you that he is able to perform it. It's still going to be done. It still has to be done. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, they're still sending me bill invoices. So I, I was telling somebody last night, so Corona's has not hit my bill collectors because they're still sending in invoices. So I want you to know they don't stop. We're not going to stop. I'm going to get into this word this morning because I feel the presence of God already. And I want to share this word with you. And I pray that it, again, be encouraging, that it be uplifting, empowering to you, that it will exercise your faith, that you will be challenged. I told you, anytime that you come into my presence, my prayer to God is that you leave being challenged. You leave uh, uh, wanting to see where it is you are with God. Are you doing what God has called you to do in this season? Oh, we need you now. We need, if there's ever a time that the church is needed, we need you right now. The Bible says, he says, listen, Vic, don't pray for the harvest. Listen, I'm controlling the harvest. Don't you worry about that. The harvest is plenteous. What I need you to pray for right now, I need laborers. I'm feeling an anointing already. I need laborers. I need those who are in the midst of challenge, who are in the midst of trouble, and yet they are still plumbing the line. I want to take this time to say this to you. I want you to know I love you. If nobody has told you this morning, I want you to know on behalf of myself, the church we're called to serve my, my wife, we love you. If I can hug you, man, I'll hug you. I want to let you know I love you and I think that you are doing an amazing job. I, I know it's not easy right now. I'm not crazy. I know it's challenging. I was telling somebody the other day, I have Christ in my life and I'm telling you sometimes I get to tripping. I, sometimes I just turn all the way up and I have him in my life. I, I have received Jesus as my Lord and Savior and sometimes Pastor Vic, that's right, I, excuse my French, I be tripping, right? But I and I, and I pray for those who have not yet confessed Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know. And I know they're not doing it. They're, they're just trying their way. But this is our prayer. That this is going to be the season that they stop trying to do what God freely wants to do in their life. They're going to receive him as Lord and Savior. And they're going to see their life expand in a way that they did not know. This is what I need your help in. I need your help in praying for these uh, um, individuals who have not yet experienced the free gift of grace. That is Jesus Christ. That this will be the season that Jesus is exemplified through us. Listen, because they can't come to our church right now. It's never been about the church anyway. Don't let me get into that. I'll get into that in a minute. It's always been about you and I. So now we are becoming, listen to me, we are becoming the Facebook. We're becoming the Instagram. We're becoming the TikTok, if you will. I'm telling you, we are becoming the social image of who Jesus is. And that's why he says, I want you to be Matthew 5 and 16. Glory to God. I want you to be the light that shines in a dark place. It's dark out here. I say it all the time. It's dark out here right now. And they need the light. They need to see how it is they can get through this season. And you are the best one to do it. So I challenge you this morning. See yourself beyond yourself. Let's get out of the confines of our homes. Listen, draw those blinds. Raise those windows. And let's be who God has called us to be. Come out of the, I said it, come out of the closet. Come out of hiding. These people need to see if God is real, I need to see somebody that's operating in his realness. If this Jesus person is who you say he is, then I need to see him exemplified through and in your life. I need to see that, that if I trust him, that I give him my life, that he's going to be everything that I need him to be. If it is you want me to serve this Christ, show me that he's real. And that's what we. I feel right now. I feel right now in the season that we are like the prophet Isaiah. 
And we are up against the prophet Elijah, excuse me, we're up against the 430 prophets on the Mount Carmel. And I believe we are being challenged to see who God is real. Is the God of this world stronger than the God of our fathers? He says the real God is going to answer, listen to me, by fire. I have no doubt. That the one I serve, listen, I can't lose with the one I choose. You feel me? I know he's going to come through. He's going to be there for us. And he's going to see us through. Let's pray. Let's get to this word. And I'm going to get out of your way. Because you are going to minister to somebody. Somebody today is going to receive a word of testimony from your mouth. Someone today. Someone today is going to free you. I see your Instagram. So glad that you are joining in with us. I'm so grateful that you're able to partner with us in this season. Because it's going to take all of us. Not just me. But every person that's 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 just over. Listen, it, it's been an influx and increase doing social media. You better be careful. I'm telling you because this now is just taking over. And I salute every person, every pastor, every leader, every spiritual believer who who are pursuing um, the ministry and the call of God doing this season. Thank you. Thank you for being selfless. Thank you for being what we need you to be in this season. Thank you for standing strong. Thank you for in the midst of adversity. You, you have a, a resolve to say, we're going to stand for God. We're going to be who he needs us to be in this season. We're going to stand and be what he needs us to be in this season. And I thank you. I thank you. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we honor you. We praise you. We thank you. For you have given us this opportunity to come before your people with your people. And we do it, God, in confidence. We do it in grace. We do it in your name. And we pray, Lord, that you would have your own way. We pray that you would allow this word to penetrate the hearts of your people, that it will go to them, that it will be for them what they need it to be. I pray this morning, Father, that your glory will befall every home, every eye that is viewing, every heart that is viewing, every ear that is listening. And I pray for the power of the anointing, that, that as they leave, Father, as they hit the finish button, that you will challenge them in their faith. That Lord, that, that that gift, that calling, that purpose will be stirred up on the inside of them. And Lord, that they would do what you've called them to do. And I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Let's get to the word of God. We good? We good? Let's get to the word of God. All right. I'm going to come this morning from the book of Matthew, the eighth chapter. Uh, I'm only going to deal with four verses, one in particular that I want to highlight um, because of its power, because of its principle and, and the context by which I need for us to really uh, dive in this morning. Matthew chapter 8, uh, verses 23 through 27, uh, with our focus on verses 26. All right. And it says, I'm reading from the New Passion Translation. Matter of fact, I'm going to read, let me read from uh, the, the New Living Translation. Let's go with that version. Um, it just has a little bit more intent. Um, and I love coming from that passage. All right. And it says, Matthew 8, verse 23 to 27. Then Jesus, then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake. All right. With his disciples. Okay, verse 24 says, and suddenly a fierce storm struck the lake with waves, breaking into the boat, man. But Jesus was still sleeping, all right? Verse 25 says, the disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Verse 23 says, Jesus responded, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves. And suddenly there came a great calm. The disciples were amazed. And they asked the question, who is this man? They ask. Even the winds and the waves obey him. I, I want to... I want to deal with verse 26. Verse 26, Jesus responds, Why are you afraid? All right? I want to, for the next few moments, I want to deal with the point. God is in control. God, listen to me, is in control. Jesus asked the question, why are you afraid? 
And here's the response. God is in control. Man, he's in control. For, because he's in control, I don't, I don't have to worry. I don't have to fret. God is in, listen to me. God is in control. I want you to know that. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear my voice as loud as you can. That God is in control. Listen, he's in control of everything that we need. All right? God is in control. Know that. He's in control. Okay? Uh, uh, and and here, here's the point I really want to get to. I want you to know this. I, I want you to know this. This was the point. Here, here we are. This was the point that Jesus was trying to get them to understand. I need you to go from that place. And I need you to go to the place that I've called you to go into. I, I, I need you to understand that this is the place that's going to determine your growth. This is the place that's going to be, y'all excuse me, this is the place that's going to uh, uh, really be the, the, the point that's going, to, that's going to open the door for where you need to go. You got me? He says, do not be afraid. Why, why, why are you fearful? Um, I, I, I want you to know something, and, and this text is really coming after the fact that they had just seen Jesus feed 5,000. They seen him. They seen him do it. And now Jesus says, I need you because you've gotten comfortable. What happened is you, you've been so comfortable with me that now I got to take you to the next level. And see, we have to be careful. And I think where we were, we're changed now. Where we were, we were so comfortable. Listen to me. We were so comfortable doing our churches, doing our inside stuff that we forgot. We forgot what it is that God called us to. And so therefore, God says, now I got to ramp up. I, I, I got to do, I got, I got to get you back to where it matters, where it means the most. And so Jesus says, I need you now, I need you now to get into the boat and go to the other side. What was he doing? He was, he was trying to jog their memory. Memory, let me tell you something. Memory is a powerful way of stirring ourselves up. And so oftentimes, Jesus would create, take moments and turn them into miracles because it would be those miracles that will become memory. And when you think of a season where it got tight and you didn't know if you were going to be able to stand, if you were, if you're going to be able to make it out, that muscle memory will cause you to remember, oh my God, he did it back then. He can do it again. And what I'm telling you is this, that even where we are right now, that muscle memory within you needs to understand this, that the same God that's been bringing us through, that been bringing us over, that been making ways, that's been opening doors. Listen to me. He is still doing it. He hasn't stopped. He hasn't changed. Man, he is still operating by his spirit. He is still operating by his power. He is still operating by his anointing. He has not stopped. He has not stopped. And here's the thing, what I love about this text. The Bible says when Jesus sends them across to the other side, he doesn't just let them go by themselves. But look at verse 20. Look at verse 23. Verse 23, he comes back and tells them, Jesus got in the boat with them. I want you to know right now, you are not in the season by yourself. You are not, listen to me, you are not in this season by yourself. The scripture gives us a confident and a promise. He says, I don't care what happened, I'm paraphrasing, but your scripture says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says this, I am with you even until the ends of the earth. I am not going to leave you. Right now, it may feel like you are by yourself. Right now, it may feel as though you're trying to transition through this season by yourself. You're asking God, where are you? I trusted in you. I paid. I hear, you, I hear some of you. I paid tithes. I paid offering. I, I, I'm, I'm seeking your face and I'm doing all of this. And I'm not knocking what you're doing, but I need you to understand what you do does not give God directives of who he is. Mm. What you do does not make God or break God. The Bible is clear in Romans 5 and 8 where he says, while you were yet in your sin, while you were yet in a place that you did not have me first, while you were yet in a place 
place where I was not priority, I died for you. And so what he gives us is this. He says, I don't care what it is you do. It's not going to change who I am because I, I need to know I made you. I created you. I was the one that put you here. So it doesn't stop on your dime. No, I'm going to continue to be who I've always been. Man, that's so good right there. I'm not going to stop because you you feel as though you don't matter or you, you think it's shaky. You think it's scared. No, 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 no. I want you to understand I'm still going to be who I've always been. It doesn't change. I need to remind you. God is in control. God is in control. I need you to put that out there. I need you to establish that. I need you to know that. I need you to believe that. God is in control. I need somebody to hashtag right now. God is in control. He has not stopped his plan just because of things, just because there's been an economic steal, just because they're, they're causing us to become distant socially. It has not stopped the progression of God. You know what we got to do? We got to, um, we, listen, we must go for what do we do from here where do we go from here i was asking god in my own time of fellowship in my own time of worship i was saying god what do we do right now i, I i'm really trying to to understand what what it is to, to, if, I, if i'm going to lead your church through this season what is it you want me to do he says vic you must go forward you must be in a position and a place that you go for forward is the only direction I need you to go. You can't stand still and you can't go backwards. I'm going to tell you all right now, this where we are today has become our new normal. We, we will never be able to go back where we were prior to this challenge on the earth today. I was so reminded of Exodus 14. You don't have to go there. But Exodus 14, when God has given Moses a directive to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. And, and mind you, when the children of Israel went into Egypt, they were about 70 people plus. But after the 430 year mark, there were over 2 million people out of that whole time period. Listen to me. They went from 70 to 2 million. Listen to me. And in that season, Moses had to lead those people out. And listen, that I, I, I can't go into that, but it was so much within that that they begin to grow. Listen to me. And the people that had them oppressed were less in number than they were. Mm. But because their minds were never renewed to understand that we are more powerful than they, they continued to stay in slavery. Man, they never understood that he, and the Bible even goes to fact and says that the more Egypt oppressed Israel, the more Israel grew. And they could never get their minds, man, they could never get their minds in line with the will and the purpose of God. And so they always operated from a mindset of they are stronger than us when God has always made them stronger than the enemy. And, and I'm telling you, life will have you in a place where you won't know your wealth, you won't know your value, you won't know who you are, you won't know the power that God has given unto you. The Bible gives us an understanding. He says, where there is no vision. New King James Version, New International Version says, where there is no revelation, the people perish. People right now are living less than their power because they don't know who they are. They've allowed situation and circumstance to always deny the gift and the destiny that God has put in them and that God has put on them. But I need you this morning. I need you to shake yourself. I need you to get into a place. Listen to me. I need you to get into a place, my God. I need you to get into a place where you understand who it is you serve, that you understand who it is is within you, who it is that's about you, who it is that's for you. And that blessed me so much because it like can have you in such a way where you'll be looking from the opposite side of the lens. But a lot of us need to change our perspective. And on that boat, let me give you the first point. The first point is this. You got to understand that your perspective has to change. If your perspective has not changed in this season, then you're still focusing on your own self. You're looking at it from the wrong side of the lens. You need to change your perspective. And the Bible says this, that the, the disciples, when that storm came into the boat, man, I'm feeling the presence of grace. They begin to shake. They begin to get fearful. The Bible says in verse 24, 
Verse 24, it says that the storm begins to rock their boat. Listen what it says. It says, and suddenly, listen, this thing came suddenly without preparation, without warning, without, without a meeting with you. And life has a way. Man, life has a way of bringing a shift to you, to you without asking your permission. Life has a way for coming in and interrupting your life. Yeah, I know this thing crazy. Life has a way for, from interrupting what you know as, as the normal. Life has a way of interrupting normalcy. It has a way. And I believe it is spiritually in, in inspired because God never wants us to get into a place where we become comfortable. We become so comfortable that we get eased, that we think it's always going to be this way, that we stay where we are, that we continue to do the same thing. And what that does, I say it all the time, it's a mantra, it's a thing that has become a culture in our church that comfortable, when you are comfortable, you are not creative. Comfortability kills creativity. And when you are at a place where you are not challenged, when you are at a place when you're not uh, uh, nobody has you accountable when you are at a place where, where you are just at ease, you stop dreaming, you stop moving forward you stop approaching life with an edge, you stop going after it with the faith and with the fire and you just become eased and so they're in a point now that their boat has become rocked and is rocking they're, the Bible gives us a, a term it says a fierce storm this thing that has come to us suddenly by way of a coronavirus, and I want to submit to you, I don't, I'm not trying to put coronavirus on a platform because it's only a byproduct. It's a means to an end. And oftentimes things have to be brought into our life that's going to shake us and wake us up and, and let us understand that it is not a time for us to get eased and, and in our own and my four and no more. No, this world needs this gospel that's only the inside of you. This world needs this gospel that God has allowed you to experience. This free gift of grace, you got to be able to give it unto somebody else. And so therefore, this storm comes and shakes the boat. It says, and it struck it, and it began, watch this, and it began to break into the boat, man. This thing that we are up against right now, man, it's coming. It's breaking into our homes. It's breaking into our marriages. It's breaking into our livelihoods. It's breaking into our futures. It's breaking into our stocks. It's breaking into our Roth IRAs. It's breaking into our bodies. And, and we're wondering, oh my God, where is Jesus? I know you are. You're wondering, where is he? You're wondering if he's going to be here. Does he understand what I'm going through? They're calling saying, I don't know if your job is going to be in existence by next week. I don't know if we'll be able to extend any more time for you not to pay your bills. I don't know how much longer we'll be able to allow you to receive unemployment. I don't know how longer it will be before I'm able to shut the company down and not be able to give you guys any type of, of payment, any type of, of, of what they call it Thank you, Holy Spirit. Any stifles, any stiflings, or any type of any type of programs that we can. I don't know if we can bear it all. And I know you're under that fear. I know you're under that pressure. I know. I listen. I'm under it too. Trying to handle mortgages. Trying to figure out what the next six months is going to look like. Trying to figure out if are we going to be so much under that we'll never get back on the top. I know that this storm, that this storm has come with a fierceness that is challenging everything you know. It's challenging everything you believe. It's challenging everything that you would have hoped in. But here is what I need for you to understand. God is in control. I, listen, without doubt, with, as a statement of fact, this is not something that I heard. This is not something that somebody else told me. This is something that I do believe that I need you to receive today. God is in control. Control without fail, 
without doubt. Listen, God is in control. I need five people to hashtag that right now. God is in control. He's in control of my life. He's in control of my marriage. He's in control over my children. He's in control over my finances. He's in control over my body. He's in control over covering us from this virus. God is in control. Listen to me. God is in control. Listen to me. If you don't hear anything else that I share with you today, I need you to know as a statement of fact, I want to put this directive in your spirit that once you leave from this conversation between you and I, that you can walk away with this word of confidence. God is in control. Don't you let it challenge who God is in your life. Don't you let it shake the truth of God that remains in your life. I want you by the spirit of God and by the anointing of God, shake that memory muscle in your mind. Shake that memory muscle in your heart to remind you if God brought you out before, man, he the same God, he going to still bring you out now. Ah, man, listen, man, I am so amped up right now. God is in control. I need you to put that in your mind. I need you to write that on the table of your heart. I need you to write that on the tablet of your spirit. I need you to put it in your house. I need you to put it around your children. The Bible says uh, there in the book of Isaiah, oh, Joshua, rather, he says, put your children, glory to God, in remembrance, man, that's good, of who I am and what I've done. And that is to say that the God God of our fathers <laughs> is still well able to be the God of our children. It is so powerful that you remind your children, baby, God is in control. Mommy, are we ever going to go back to school? God is in control. Mommy, are, are we ever going to get back to what we used to do? God is in control. Daddy, are we ever going to be able to go back and play sports? God is in control. Don't you ever forget it. Don't you let nobody challenge you. And what I want you to understand that though this thing came upon us suddenly, we have somebody in the boat with us. We have somebody in our homes with us. Listen to me. We have somebody in our life with us. And you can take confidence in verse 24. You can take confidence. Listen to this. Now listen. Listen. While we were freaking out, Jesus is sleeping. <laughs> oh my God. We are in trouble. We are under duress. We are distressed. We are scared. We are fearful. But look at the ending of verse 24. The Bible says, and Jesus was sleeping. <laughs> Suddenly a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the very boat that they were breaking into. Jesus, listen to me, <laughs> is sleeping. Why is that important? Jesus right there is naturally showing us what we have spiritually on the inside of us. There is a peace. My God, I'm trying. I'm trying not to go crazy right here in the studio. I'm trying not to go crazy. Jesus, listen to me. Jesus is showing us what we have the ability to posture. Even in this season of chaos, Jesus is sleeping. Why everybody is freaking out, why everybody is crying, why everybody is going, running amok, going crazy. Jesus is sleeping. Why is he sleeping? Because he is at a peace and a confidence that our Father is in control. He understands that no matter how hard my life is rocked, no matter how many challenges come in my life, God is in control and he's not going to let anything come upon me that he's not already prepared me for or given me the ability to, put, to go through. The Bible says that there is a peace, mm, my God, that surpasses all understanding that it will keep your heart and guard your mind. It will guard your mind and it will keep your heart and Jesus is, ex is, is exemplifying where we need to be in this season. Let me tell you why. Because when you don't operate in peace, you can't think straight. You, 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 you really can't, you can't really hear God because he knows we get, we're going to get through this. I want you to know we're going to get through this. This too shall pass.
Why? God is in control. So here's what I need you to do today. I need you to ask yourself, where am I? Have I forgotten the promises of God over my life? Have I gotten to a place where I've allowed what God created to become more powerful than the God that created it? Have I really lost sight of God in my life because of the storm? Have I really lost focus of who I serve? Is that why the fear is there? And I want to tell you, when you acknowledge what it is that's challenging you, it, it, it makes the deliverance process so much sooner and quicker. So if that's you, you're saying, Pastor, listen, man, I, I'm battling right now. I, I'm, I, am, I am fearful. I want, to, I want to pray for you right now. I want you to put your hand over your heart. I want you to close your eyes. I don't want you to see anything. I don't want you to see a problem. I don't want you to see bills. I don't want you to see budgets. I don't want you to see next year. I don't want you to see the next six months. All I want you to do is visualize Jesus with you. The things that God has committed your heart and life to do. I want you to remember. Listen, God is in control. Let me give you the, re the, re the results of that scripture. The Bible says after he speaks to them, he gets up and speaks to the winds and waves. And the Bible says, and suddenly, just like the storm came in, the Bible says, suddenly there was a great calm. And the disciples begin to be in revelation to say, what matter of man is this that speaks and even the winds and waves obey him? He's the same God that lives inside of you. It's the same power that you have. Now it's time to rise up and speak in the authority that God has given unto you. Speak to those winds, speak to those storms that wants to challenge your progress from getting to your promise. But let me tell you something. He's waiting for us to get to the other side. He already is waiting. He's, he knows without a doubt that we're going to get there. I need you to believe God.